Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome to Yesterday's Studios. Today we will be discussing an aspect of one of my favorite sports to watch and that is the All-Star Game. I'm currently wearing the 1980 All-Star Game hat which was hosted by the Dodgers. So I hope you learn something and enjoy this video. For those of you who watch baseball or are aware of sports events, know that yesterday was the all-star game between the National League and the American League. It is also the 90th year anniversary of the first MLB all-star game. So let's get into the details of yesterday's game as well as the very first game that happened back in 1933. Part 1 From the Mind of Arch War to Reality before we get into what happened in yesterday's game, let's take it back to the very beginning. In 1933, for those of you who don't know, the United States was in a Great Depression. Due to this, there was great economic distress and unhappiness, unemployment, things were just very bad. Because of this, people were not able to attend baseball games or do fun activities and attendance was plummeting. With this in mind, the league searched for solutions. They wanted to bring happiness to the American public, but also increase attendance. The mastermind behind this was Arch Ward. He was a sports editor at the Chicago Tribune and would come up with the idea of the MLB All-Star Game. In his newspaper articles, he would hype up the game to get people excited to come and attend. His prose and persuasive tone would lead the readers to be able to visualize the possibility of what this game could mean and be like. In his article, Chicago to see baseball's biggest game, Ward wrote that this would be the greatest game ever played and would bring into light that never has the maximum strength of one major league have been pitted against the maximum strength of the other. He wanted to give the people what they wanted the best of the best from the American League and National League to go against each other and so that the American public could decide which league was actually superior. What would make this even more exciting for the American public is that they would get a say in who gets to play. They were to vote for who got to play. Starting immediately, you may pick the lineup you may consider the strongest each league can put on the field and mail your selections to the sports editor of the Tribune. The player who receives the greatest number of votes for the various positions will appear in the game. And in order to spread the news, the Chicago Tribune partnered with 47 newspapers to help make voting more accessible to baseball fans nationwide. As you can see, Ward was very determined to make this big game a success. And ultimately, this did happen considering that the Midsummer, Cl Na Midsummer Classic happens every year since then. Part 2. The first game versus 90 years later. So much has happened in these 9 decades that has not just changed and impacted the world, but MLB itself. Even this year, some new rules were implemented into changing the game from what it was 90 years ago. However, I want to break down all of the details between the first All-Star game in 1933 and the most current one in 2023, so let's get right into it. The very first game would be played in the city of Chicago at Skip Park on the 6th of July in 1933. The attendance to the first All-Star game was 49,200 people which sold out the whole entire stadium. 2023, the MLB All-Star game would be hosted in the city of Seattle at T-Mobile Park. Their attendance would be 47,159 people. In 1933, the National League's starting lineup would include the players Dick Bartle as shortstop, Wally Berger as outfield, Frankie Fridge as second base, Chick Haffey as outfield, Bill Hallaman as the starting pitcher, Chuck Klein outfield, Pepper Martin third base, Bill Terry first base, and Jimmy Wilson as catcher. On the other side, the American League's starting lineup would include Ben Chapman, outfield, Joe Cronin, shortstop, Jimmy Dykes, third base, Rick Farrell, catcher, Lou Gehrig, first base, Charlie Genringer, second base, Lefty Gomez, their starting pitcher, and Babe Ruth, outfield, with Al Simmons as outfield as well. 
On the other hand, for 2023's National League starting lineup, we have Ronald Acuna Jr. as Ralph Rightfield, Freddie Freeman, first base, Mookie Betts, center field, J.D. Martinez, designated hitter, Nolan Arlando, third base, Luis Arades, second base, Sean Murphy as catcher, Corbin Carro as left field, and Orlando Arcia as shortstop. And on the American League's starting lineup, we have Marcus Seaman, second base, Shohei Otani, designated hitter, Randy Arosarena, left field, Corey Seager, shortstop, Yandy Diaz, first base, Adeles Garcia, right field, Austin Hayes, center field, Josh Young, third base, and Jordan Heim, catcher. So today was the All-Star game and this was the end result. The NL won 3-2, while the AL won 4-2 in the first game in 1933. Part 3, Conclusion. The All-Star game started off as an event that was supposed to occur only once, and thus it was deemed as a game of the century. But as we know, as has happened every single year since 1933, with the exception of 1945, due to wartime travel restrictions. The All-Star game has moved beyond just being a game has extended to an All-Star week, which, has, which includes the Home Run Derby, which was introduced in 1985, and the Celebrity Softball game, which was introduced in 2001. So in conclusion, everyone say thanks to Arch Ward for the creation of the All-Star Game. And I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Bye!